Welcome to our first video about tense. This is a video about tense, so my first question is, what is tense? Does it mean past, present, and future? Does it mean when you feel stressed and uncomfortable, or is it the way a verb shows the time you're talking about? Well, in this class, it's choice C. It's the way a verb changes to show what time you're talking about. Second question, how many tenses does the English language have? Take a guess, is it three, six, or 12? And you may know the answer, 12. There are three present tenses, simple present, present progressive, present perfect. There are also three past tenses, simple past, past progressive, and past perfect. Progressive, by the way, is also called continuous. Now you might notice that these are highlighted when this is not. There are three future tenses, simple future, future progressive, future perfect. Again, only one of these is highlighted. And you might have guessed that's because we are going to learn simple future tense, but not really work on future progressive or future perfect. We will look at this, but we're not going to study this. And the three perfect progressive tenses, past perfect progressive, present perfect progressive, future per we will not work on any of those. You'll save that for writing seven. Since we are going to study all of the present tenses, let's start with simple present. Now, you probably know these very well. You don't have to think about them anymore. One of the most important verbs, of course, is be. And be is an irregular verb, but I'm sure you know it. All of the other verbs are fairly simple if you're using simple present. I play, you play, we play, they play. No change to the verb. The only agreement change is for she, he, and it. And that's true for all regular verbs. Tense shows what time we're talking about. So what times does this match? Well, there are four special uses for simple present tense. There is also, I want you to be aware, there is also a time that we use simple present to talk about the future, but we're not going to study that right now. What's important for you to know, simple present does not mean it's happening right now. That's not what it means. If you mean that the action is happening now, use present progressive. Here are the four special uses. The first one is, it's always true. For example, scientific facts. A circle has no corners, but a triangle has three corners. Has, simple present. Math, two plus two is four. Four plus four equals eight. Anything that's longer than your life. For example, the dinosaurs are extinct. The earth goes around the sun. The month has 30 or 31 days. All of those are simple present because they're always true. They're also called timeless truths. The second use of present tense is repeating scheduled actions like classes or the bus schedule or anything that repeats. What time do you get your break at work? I take a coffee break at 1030. We have lunch at 12. If it's scheduled, if it's not really in your control, if it repeats, use simple present. The third use of present tense are for habits. Personal habits, we often use the word always or usually. I always wake up at 7.30. I usually make coffee before I eat. I always study at night. The last use that I want to look at is states, states that are true now. Now, what is a state? A state is not an action, something you do. A state is something beyond your control. For example, I am short. I have brown eyes. 
I can't control those things. They're true whether I want it to be true or not. Those are states. And because they're always true, we often use them to describe a person. Here is some example of state or also called stative verbs. Stative verbs include be, seem, have, look, smell. She has black hair. She has big eyes. He seems energetic. He looks happy. She is from Colombia. She is French. He is short and handsome. He is skinny and strong. My mom has a great sense of humor. My dad always smells like his favorite cologne. Now you noticed I had the word looks in there. Be very careful with looks. It has a few different meanings. It can be an action, right? I'm looking for my glasses. What am I doing? I'm looking for my glasses. Well, that's an action. You will not use simple present. You look sleepy. You look excited. Oh, now that one, that is a state. So it's simple present. He looks like an athlete. You look like a smart person. All of these are states, examples of states. See the difference in meaning? So I want you to memorize these four uses of simple present. Simple present does not mean it's happening now. It could be used for facts, timeless truth. Remember, science, math, two plus two is four. It could be used for scheduled or repeated actions. Like, I take 15 credits a term. The bus leaves every 30 minutes. Here's a hint. If you're using simple present for a repeated ongoing action, there's almost always going to be some kind of time word to tell you what the time period is. Next, habits. And you remember that there's a clue there. We usually use a word like always, or maybe sometimes a lot, always, usually, all the time. Those are your clue words that let you know it's a habit. Finally, states, states that are true now. I am short. That sounds good. Do you feel tired? Try it yourself. Try to think of some examples, things that are always true, things that are repeated or scheduled, habits, states. Remember your clue words for repeated actions. There's probably going to be some kind of time word. For habits, there's probably going to be a word like usually or always. For states, they almost are always used to describe a person or situation. There is a very common way that we use simple present to describe things with, that are states. There is, there are. There are seven days in a week. That's a fact. That's a definition. That's a description. There are three bedrooms in my house. Well, that describes the house. There is one prime minister at a time. There is a new president every four years. You know, those describe a situation. That's why these are simple present. You might notice that this is sort of an unusual type of grammar. The subject is there, but what we're talking about is after the verb. So, the agreement comes after the verb. If it's plural, the agreement is plural. There are 21 people. If it's singular, the agreement is singular. There is only one. So that's an unusual type of sentence, but the meaning is pretty clear. Remember, this is used for definitions or descriptions. There is another way that we use there is, there are, and that's when we're trying to explain some new information, something that just happened. Hey, hey, there's a call for you. There is. There are some visitors today. Look, there are visitors, somebody new, somebody different. Ooh, there's a weird sound coming from my car. There is. It's a new thing. So new information also is used for this pattern. There is, there are. Watch this video a couple times. Remember this information. Remember, 
what is tense? How many tenses are there? What tenses are we going to study in this class? What are the four uses of simple present? And what is special or unusual about there is, there are sentences? If you can learn all that, you will be ready for our first quiz. Bring questions to class on Wednesday. Good luck.